As we wake up early in the cool of the morning, first thing first, they will start the fire to warm up themselves and get ready. The Hadzabe quickly prepare to go out hunting. Breakfast is in the luxury afforded to the Hadzabe. Their priority is to hunt and secure enough food for their family. This morning, it is still early, and they stop to at a bush, heavy with fruits. The fruit is called karangapori in Swahili, or wild groundnuts in English. The fruit is sweet and high in carbohydrates and fiber. An excellent source of energy to carry them through the day as they walk miles in search for game. The Hadzabe's diet is hugely varied and includes almost anything edible found in the environment, except the snakes. They hunt everything from the smallest demise to the massive eland. The Hadzabe are a dwindling tribe of hunter-gatherers living around near Lake Yas in northern Tanzania. The Hadzabe continue their traditional lifestyle as they have for thousands of years. Searching, we don't know yet. We have already covered at least uh, 10k, so something like that. It's been a long walk, and I don't know. We're still on searching, so hopefully, we find something. Um, so, as I said, this is a Hadza's life. Um, I'm quite happy to be out here and experience every moment and every. The Hadzabe are well adapted for walking fast and for long distance. From an outsider's point of view, it might appear that uh, the Hadzabe are walking randomly in hopes of finding game through thick bush and it is difficult to determine where they are heading. They have picked up clues and are following faint footprints. Hunting game with bows and arrows, gathering honey, a favorite and highly valued food source, and digging for roots and tubers from deep within the arid ground of the Acacian bushland. Most Hazabe will agree that honey is one of their favorite food, and an important food source in addition to animal protein. In fact, Hadzabe have built tolerance to bees' things and don't seem much affected by stinging bees 
as they collect the honey. Surprisingly, honey makes up a large portion of caloric intake in Hazabi's diet and major source of energy. Moving from one area to another, living sustainably in harmon with nature. They found uh, something. Let's go. Okay. You can be. Due to the ever increasing population in Tanzania and encroachment of farmers and pastoralists into Hadzabi traditional territories, the wildlife are disappearing and the Hadzabi are finding it harder and harder to hunt and gather enough food to sustain the traditional lifestyle. There is a lot of baboon footprints around in this area. So they now pay the attention to the baboons and they start tracking it. But I guess you can see it. This is baboon footprint. Into the area somewhere around here, maybe not a long time ago. I mean, like sometime earlier today, or probably yesterday. So they start tracking it going down to the river. Now let's see if there will be any baboon down there. You can try to see that they are really trying to pay attention to the footprints. Believe, believing that a baboon will be somewhere close by. So they are all trying to scatter the around. Let's hope we will come across with the baboon because it looks like these guys really need something to get. As the sun rises above, the temperature rises quickly. But the Hadzabe are accustomed to the heat and keep a brisk pace accompanied by their dogs. Undoubtedly, man's oldest and best friend. The Hadzabe's dogs help track down game and alert the Hadzabe to dangers with their keen senses. I think dogs are going to take it too and see what is happening. So now it's Hadza and the dogs. Who's going to take it? Oh my god, they're going to get beat by the dog. Wow. Today, the Hadzabe's unique culture and traditions are in peril of being lost if their hunting territories are not urgently protected, having been pushed off lands favorable to farming and grazing.
Ah, you got to go out Oh, liver, liver, but this is after after they catch a prey or something. So they give them the intestine, livers, and stuff. But what if, what if in a day they don't get anything? Like they go out hunting and dogs, dogs eat food. Okay, what kind of food? Oh really? Yeah. I, I never tested oh, yeah. the, the fruit. Ah, yeah. Yeah. Wow. Look, look how many hierarchy they got. That's a big one.
because he just grabbed it and just took it. And then? And then you have to eat the babuki. Are they gonna eat it out here or are they gonna take it back to the family? Ah, uh, they depend, they can eat some. Ah, oh, they will eat some? Yes. And then take the rest back to the family? Exactly. So they're gonna start the fire somewhere there? Yes. Okay. So the main purpose of the fire is to remove the, the fur of the hyrax and they'll try to eat a little bit of it and the rest will be taken back to the family. So they really care about the family to be honest. They always think about the family. They're out here, walked a lot of miles but whenever they get anything, they will eat a little bit and the rest will be taken back to the family. Let's go and see how this start the fire. So the thing is every time they call something that I did think is enough for a day they will sit down and uh, <laughs> relax a little bit just to celebrate about what they have got and then uh, as we say they might start the fire by removing the, uh, the, the high rocks far before they start taking back home so the dogs are also waiting patiently by the way, the prey is not that big enough to feed everybody for today, especially if you include the dogs in there. So hopefully they will go and make something for the dogs after this. But if, let's see, we still have a day to walk and search for more prey and hopefully maybe we might find something. Something more to feed the rest of the family, to food for the rest of the day. 
So here's the thing. The, the kids are trying to look for, for the honey. There is a little hole that they think or they say that the honey was there but that's the problem because they have another tribe to, uh, now in village around the Irman, they had some lands and now they taking over whatever uh, they find which are usually used to be for the Hadza so if the honey now also the other tribes uh, they do know where the honey honey's holes are they mark all those areas and when the Hadza are not around they can move and collect all the honeys so here the thing now the Hadza are just right here they try to find if honey is there because that's the whole one of their mark where they can find the honey easily after a period of time but it's all gone now so this is actually a problem now because uh, the more other tribes are invaded into the Hadza lands the more Hadza suffer from finding food and now they have to go a walk miles and miles far and far looking for the honey or it's so become a real problem for these guys. So what is the last starting the fire is what I was saying earlier and they're going to to, to, to barbecue the hydrax and cleaning it with the fire so they will probably eat some of it here and the rest will, will be taken back to the family. The Hadza start the fire by rubbing two sticks. The friction causes enough heat that it starts smoldering. Start smoldering. <coughs> that was pretty fast. Okay. Bye. Mm -hmm. Hmm, that was very interesting too. Thank you, I take Uku, but Sammy Hitcher are unable. Ekiya, Matamami go to Aya. Ato bits Aya. Each night I be tired, I be my man. Ale. Bitchy, bitchy. That's a damn mind. I mean, I tried to bang some bamboo. Yeah, I'm not bitchy. Ale. Tell me, I see. I see. They are on searching for, for the hyrax. I think there's there's plenty of them around this area and uh, if I look around I can see the dogs are going crazy. Hyrax are hidden on the inside of the rocks of which is really hard to get them out so the Hadza and the dogs are really trying to get them out.
trying to distract you, the Hyrax, to get out of the rocks. Let's just wait and see if anything will come out. I mean, if the Hyrax will come out of the rocks.
The Hadza have hunted down a large warthog. An animal this size will ensure sufficient food for the entire family. However, regardless of the size of the kill, the Hadza will almost always share food with every family member. I feel like come with you, it's a creature, Nana. It's a creature. It's a too good, too good, too good, too Oh no! He not He 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 Yeah, I need that one. I need a big egg. Come on. No,
Ani pata Oh no, ah, te, te, ah, te. Ah. Tu tiens à coco chaud. Tu. Ah. Ni pas tu t'as bien, non, bah, ah, tu
He seems to be very happy for this one. We were actually on our way back home and this is just happy. You know? It's such a lucky day, we didn't know. They had a few animals this morning, which is a hyrax and a monkey it was very small. Along the way, they came across with the kudu. It's a small one, but it's good enough for the family now. They look very happy. This is how the huts are out. This is a lifestyle. Of the so this is what is going on so we cannot complain on this way it makes them happy and that's what matters okay. another day another life for the Adzabe.
Okay, it's getting better and better now. All right. What a life, what a life. Just feel so much connected just to be out here. I mean, look how much these guys are enjoying themselves. The Hadzabi territory is arid and seemingly inhospitable in the dry season. However, even when the rains are late, and the seasonal rivers have run dry. The Hadzabi are aware how and where to find life-sustaining water. The iconic baobab trees of Africa are known as the tree of life for good reason. Not only do the massive trunk of the abundant baobab trees swell as they absorb and store water during the wet season. But the trees also have cavernous holes between the immense branches that can hold water for a long period of time and provide a source of water for the Hadzabe in the dry season. Another reliable source of water for the Hadzabe are the Sun River beds. Although the river has long since dried up at the surface, digging a few feet below the surface usually results in pooling of drinkable water. We see two or two up and each other. We teach me how to watch the beauty. What do I have to tell you? By using the velvet, oh no, baby, the velvet foot. They cut it into a small hole to make it like a cup that you can fetch water with it. So that is the velvet tree, the velvet foot. I mean, so there you go. So the first thing they will do is to clean the water by fetching the dirt water out of the hole. And I think if they let it cool down, the water will clean up, will get clean. And now they can start drinking it. The Hadzabe don't use drinking cups, but rather kneel down and drinking water straight out of the paddle or otherwise 
use the shell of baobab fruit that has been cut in half to scoop water. Thank you. 